this is a video to show you how to find the best clock frequency for the PWM so that you can get the, effect, the highest effective number of bits for a given clock frequency of the microcontroller and the bandwidth and order of a particular filter. I have a sample file here and you can just grab it and load it into LP Spice with the open. Now I've already done this because the simulation does take uh, some time to run. But to orient you to this file, I when I was learning Pulse Width Modulation, I wanted to just try out various architectures. So a single, uh, single pole low pass filter, double pole, a RLC, a op amp based and a salon and key based filter. Now when you run the simulation which is a transient we can look at the outputs over time and yeah this is kind of a impossible to look at because I am running a transient simulation, but I'm stepping the um, the clock frequency that we're we're looking at. So in fact, if I just let's just look at one, you can see that at one clock frequency, there's a lot of ripple coming through, and as the clock frequency increases, yes, I'm changing how long we need to simulate for. And so that at these higher frequencies, the ripple is smaller, but the simulation time is less. Rather than try to uh, interpret this, I have these measure scripts that will measure the peak-to-peak -peak ripple, which is where you get your effective number of bits. Well, how uh, to see that data? Well, you go to... view the spice error log and because I have step data I can right click on this screen and click on plot step data and out will come a figure and then you can just see here are the things that were in fact measured this is where you'll see your your voltage and current signals but these measurements go into plot the the measured data that was stepped. For convenience, the actual equation I've put here. And so what we do is to plot that ripple equation, all we have to do is add a trace, cut and paste that in, and ripple 1 is already uh, set up. And we have our figure. This is best done on a uh, logarithmic scale. And we can see for that this particular filter, the highest effective number of bits is 5.31. And this occurs at a pulse width modulated uh, frequency of 309 kilohertz. Well, we can just add in the other traces um, one by one. And so if I want ripple 2, I just cut and paste the same equation. And now I can see for this particular filter, the effective number of bits is a, uh, a little over 6. And that happens at 160 kilohertz. Let's go ahead and just add the rest of the traces. There we have it. So this this lowest one in uh, 
Aquamarine Ripple 4 turns out to be just a single pole low pass filter as you would expect shouldn't have um, it's letting more of those uh, harmonics from the square wave get through so its effective number of bits is higher now this this one it looks like the best was ripple 2 which was the RLC filter. Oops. Then uh, two, two ones that are pretty close are the three and the five. And three was the Salon and Key, and the five is just two, two filters. Now these are both critically damped. Um, the Salon and Key filter, I must warn you, because of the gain bandwidth limitations, can actually let through uh, harmonics that you, you don't want. Because as soon as you hit the gain bandwidth uh, limit, this stops working as, a, as an op amp, and this becomes a short to high frequencies. So um, when this circuit is made for real, especially with this part, because the gain bandwidth of the parts I've been buying has been lower than what the simulation has showed. And so what you can do for your project is you can take this file and then you choose your bandwidth and design a few filters and use that Laplace uh, transform, which will give you the ideal, the best response, um, the highest effective number of bits then start putting in realistic circuits with realistic parts and it will be reduced somewhat, but at least you'll be able to explain the reasoning.